Would you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit. Speak to us the word of God and help us to receive it as the good soil. May the seeds that are planted through today's scripture take root in our hearts and help us to grow and to become fully devoted disciples of Jesus Christ who join him in his mission to transform the world. Help each of us to hear Jesus' call to go out into the world to continue his mission and give us the courage and the power to answer his call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are we getting feedback? Does it, sound, does it sound echoey to you all? Okay, good. It's just me. All right. You may have noticed that I'm dressed a little bit differently today. Some of us have been meeting together in the fellowship hall on Sundays for the past couple of months, and we've been studying the five practices of fruitful congregations. And we've come up with a lot of ideas for our church. And one of the many ideas that has come out of our discussions during our study is that we might consider dressing more casually in order to help our guests feel more comfortable. Now, we're not suggesting that we have some kind of a dress code, that we all have to dress one way or the other, but I think the consensus is that we encourage people to come as they are or to dress the way that they feel comfortable. So, this isn't quite my most comfortable, but it's getting closer. <laughs> and that doesn't mean I'm going to dress like this every Sunday, but I um, got my courage up today. So, I wanted to wear this particular t-shirt because of what it says. And I don't know if you can see it from where you are, but it says Rethink Church, and it's on the screen. It says Rethink Church. Now, I wore this same shirt the day that we had VBS in the park. And Wynne noticed what it said and commented on it. And she said, well, when are we going to do that? And I said, we are right now. We're, we've been th rethinking church and how God calls us to be the church in our study of the five practices of fruitful congregations and in some other areas as well. But uh, this is what we're doing in, in our study on Sunday mornings at 945 in the Fellowship Hall. And we have one more session. If you haven't been there yet, come join us next Sunday and we'll wrap it up as we rethink church. But we're going to continue to rethink church. So, if you have not been joining us for the study, you may want, be wondering, what does it mean to be fruitful as a congregation? Does it mean that we're going to hand out apples and oranges? No. Maybe, but that's not necessarily what it means. To be fruitful means to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. This is our mission as the church. And... In this particular congregation, we actually raise the bar a little higher, and we say that our mission is to make fully devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. You see, it always comes back to that. It always comes back to discipleship. Being disciples, growing as disciples, and making more disciples. This is our purpose as a church. This is what we are called to do. This is why the church exists. And, of course, it all goes back to Jesus. He started it by calling disciples to follow him. And we read about it in Luke's gospel early in his ministry. Jesus began to call disciples. And for a while, it seems that mostly what Jesus' disciples did was they just follow Jesus around, listen to him, teach. They get to watch him do some miraculous things. And they probably feel, you know, pretty good about hanging out with this guy who's getting really popular and famous. And they'd be saying, yeah, he told me to follow him, and I've been going with him. And you should have seen what he did last week. But as we read today's scripture, we're going to see that things are about to change for the disciples. Jesus called his disciples to do more than just hang out with him. So today we're going to read about the first time Jesus sent some of his disciples out to continue his mission. And you can read it in your Bible in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Or with this, it will be on the screen.
Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And they, the disciples, departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, how, how cool is that? Jesus gave his disciples the power and the authority to do what they had been watching him do, to join him in his mission. So what do you think that means for us? That's right. Discipleship is about more than just hanging out with Jesus and with other disciples. Discipleship is more than just coming to worship and going to Bible study and feeling good about being close to God. Now, don't get me wrong. We need to do those things. Jesus' disciples certainly do have to spend time with Jesus in prayer, study, and worship. And then they should expect to be sent out into the world to continue Jesus' mission, sharing the good news with others, feeding the hungry, helping the poor, noticing what needs to be done in the community and in the world, and then rolling up their sleeves and getting to work at transforming the world. That's right, transforming the world. Does that sound a little hard, a little too lofty of a goal? Probably is for us. But it is not too hard for Jesus, the Son of God, working through us by the power of his Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus gave his first disciples power and authority to join him in his mission, he does the same for us. The problem is that most of the time we do not accept the power and authority available to us and we do not act upon Jesus' call to go and transform the world. After all, how are we going to transform the world? How are we going to change the world? Get serious, Mindy. <laughs> we do not have the resources for that, right? Did you notice in our scripture passage what Jesus told the disciples to take with them on their mission? Nothing. He told them to take nothing. Jesus sent his disciples out to do the same work that he had been doing with the same resources that he had, nothing but faith that God would provide. This is a hard teaching for us because most of us have the means to provide for ourselves and we are not comfortable being dependent upon anyone else, even God. Unfortunately, if we never find ourselves in a position where we have to depend on God, then we will never realize just how faithful God truly is. And we will never do the amazing things that Jesus calls us to do. I had an opportunity to become dependent on God when I quit my teaching job, and moved away from everyone I knew to go to seminary in Kentucky. I found myself dependent upon God for almost everything. And I found God to be completely faithful, to provide for all of my needs. I can't explain it, but I graduated from seminary with no debt, in spite of the enormous cost of a seminary education. While I was there, God provided a house for me to live in, food, utilities, books, as well as friends, and an excellent education. When I started that journey, I was not comfortable with the being so dependent upon God and his people. 
God worked through his people to provide for those things. But now that I've had that experience, I pray that each of you might find yourself in a situation where you must depend upon God. It is one of those things that you have to experience before you can fully understand. It is not comfortable, but in the end you realize that it is not about what you can do. It is all about what God can do. And God can do amazing things in us and through us when we are willing to let him be in control. When we're willing to take a step of faith and see what he can do through us. When Jesus says, go, do this thing that we know needs to be done, but we do not know how to do it and we do not feel comfortable doing it, that is when our faith grows. And when we depend on the Holy Spirit to give us the power to do what we know we cannot do on our own power, that is when our faith grows. Jesus gave his disciples authority and power, but he also reminded them that not everyone would receive them. And I know that that's a big fear for most of us, that those we try to reach out to with the gospel, that Those we try to help will reject us. Jesus said to his disciples, wherever they do not welcome you, as you're leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. We are called to share the good news at every opportunity. But some will reject our efforts and reject us. We do our best to share the good news with everyone we can. But if they reject us, we should not become discouraged. We should just move on to the next person, praying that they will be receptive. We are called to sow seeds generously, just like Jesus did. Sometimes the seeds will fall on good soil and produce much fruit. Sometimes they'll fall on that hard soil. But we are called to keep sowing the seeds. The last verse in our passage says, They departed, the the disciples departed and went through the villages bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Now, I'm, I'm guessing they had never done that before and they didn't know how. But Jesus sent them and the disciples went. They did not give excuses about why they couldn't or shouldn't or wouldn't go. The disciples went. And did what Jesus sent them to do. And they came back pretty excited. Many people today think the church is the place where nice people come to be informed and entertained and cared for by the pastor or the Sunday school teacher or the Bible study leader or the choir director or other leaders. They join the church in order to receive ministry. But that is not a biblical view of the church. So we are rethinking what it means to be the church. The church is the people of God who have been called together through faith in Jesus Christ to continue Jesus' mission in the world. The church is the people of God who have been called together through faith in Jesus Christ to continue Jesus' mission in the world today. We come together on Sunday to worship and to learn and to encourage one another. But then we are sent out into the world the rest of the week to continue the mission that Jesus began. The practice of going into the world to continue Jesus' mission is known in our study of the five practices of fruitful congregations as risk-taking mission and service. Risk-taking mission and service. And I want to share with you a short video that shows how some of Jesus' disciples today practice risk-taking mission and service. Last time, we looked at faith-forming relationships or intentional faith development, as Bishop Schnazy phrases it. But you can't go very far along that track of intentional faith development and deepening the interior life before you feel the call of God to make a difference in the world. 
that pulls us out of ourselves into risk-taking mission and service. In Houston, we have combined several old and in some cases declining churches into one parish. What has emerged is a new ministry that has been named the Servants of Christ Parish. Together, these four congregations are now offering life-changing mission and service to their communities. Many of the social programs are located at their Mission Milby campus, ESL classes, a tax preparation service, GED classes, a small medical clinic, computer labs for neighborhood kids, and an experimental wireless internet web service that blankets the community with the largest free web service of its kind in the country. Risk taking mission for us uh, is looking at the needs of the community and taking a risk to go outside the walls of the, of the sanctuary and discovering what the community needs, uh, what the community wants, and figuring out ways that the church and our collaborative ministries can be involved in addressing those needs. At the Park Place campus, these Servants of Christ offer a several days a week feeding and human services program for the homeless. Volunteers provide significant services every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, volunteers also are out across the community, across the city in fact, uh, recruiting additional volunteers. These congregations and their volunteers who staff their ministries have taken a huge risk in extending themselves in new ways to meet human needs. In a real sense, they had to let go of their concern about their own life to embrace this new vital vision of the kingdom of God. Carolyn Dean is one of our most faithful volunteers at Crossroads. Uh, she is uh, a jewel. I'm Carolyn Dean and I'm 82 and the God bless me that I can have enough energy and physical truth to come and do this every Tuesday and Thursday because I feel blessed that we're offering this to the homeless people and the hungry people. And so, yes, I'm glad that I can come. She's up every Tuesday and Thursday morning on campus at 5.30 in the morning, stays till about one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, she uh, helps in the kitchen, she helps serve uh, the food. I usually am the one to serve the food. And some of our clients are very hungry. Some of them hungrier than others. And sometimes they perceive that maybe we've offered a little bit more to one person than the other. And maybe that particular day, this gentleman, he just wasn't thinking and he said this name and I'll spell it, I won't say it, but it was B-I-T-C-H. Well, right to begin with, we found the name of the person and they were telling him that he couldn't come for two weeks. Well, he was very hungry, so he came back earlier and they had to counsel him and all. So, but you know, over the time when we talked to him more, now he calls me an angel. Well, I'm not either one of the two. I'm somewhere in between. Risk-taking mission and service means moving out of our comfort zone. It means doing those things we would not have done except for our relationship with Jesus Christ. And yes, it sometimes means being in ministry to and with people we would not otherwise be involved with. What credit is it to you if you only love those who love you? The stretch of Christian discipleship is to take on the practices of love that move us out of our comfort zone and take us into places we would never have been had it not been for our desire to follow Jesus Christ. The values of these ministries to those who receive help is often life-saving. That's the story behind Rita Recovery Ministry housed in Beaumont, Texas. Risk-taking mission has a whole new definition for me since this storm. I believe that every time a team packs up their stuff from whatever state it is in this country and they come here, uh, it's a risk for them. It's a risk for us 
and that we're trusting that when they get here, we'll be able to work well together. It's a risk going into a home of someone you don't know and wondering what their reaction is going to be. Will they open their arms to us or will they be afraid of us? We have a couple of groups here. We have a group here from Tyler. They're called Marvin's Menders, and they've been here before. And they come in motorhomes, uh, travel trailers. And uh, they're a, a little bit older group, or mature as we call them. Um, but they're such great workers. And when you watch volunteers, especially if they can have some kind of relationship with the homeowner, um, I've seen volunteer teams start their day out in prayer with the homeowner stop during lunch and offer lunch with the homeowner and have prayer time and meditation time. I've seen them exchange notes uh, after they go home. I've seen them uh, hug and cry because they don't want to leave. So the relationships that are being built here are long lasting. I think that even though at times you have to get up early and you work when it's cold and you work when it's hot, but you meet a lot of good people and uh, not only the workers, but the people you're doing work for. And it's been a real blessing for me, uh, every job that we have did. Uh, this house had a tree fall on it and took the roof off and we went out and uh, redid the roof completely. That's kind of a finished picture. And this uh, house here, the bathroom floor had rotted out and the tub had fell through on the ground and we went in and took everything out and rebuilt the bathroom and we have some fun projects and these were some shelves that we built for the local path for a book program they started for the kids and this is uh, some of the destructions after the hurricane in New Orleans we went down and helped redo a house there it's really helping people um... You can only do one thing at a time. You do the best you can. The John Wesley words, by all the means you can, by all the people you can, by all the ways you can. Um, you do the best you can with everyone. It, it matters to this one. The starfish, the story of the starfish, it mattered to the one that was on the ground. They threw it back and you just keep throwing them back. You just keep helping who you can help at the time you can help. And it witnesses Christian love for everybody else and it spreads God's God's Word and the Gospel and what we're supposed to do. After the hurricane, uh, Rita, it was, we had pretty extensive damage to the house uh, with the roof and uh, it was a lot of water damage to the inside which really had the whole house needing to be done all over again. With Rita Recovery, when they came along and they helped us, it was a blessing because we didn't know who to turn to. You know, when they came along like angels and they just you know, they worked together and, you know, they were real friendly and we got to know them good and they helped us out. They helped us out a whole lot. To see these lives transformed, to see them have hope again and to know that their house, they don't want a new home. They want the home they were living in, the home their kids grew up in, the home that they had their holidays in. Um, they're not asking for any more than just getting their home back to the way it was. Risk-taking mission and service. I hope that we will prayerfully consider how we can answer the call, Jesus' call, to be sent into the world to continue Jesus' mission. And one mission that I'm encouraging you to participate in right now is Invitation Sunday, as Josh mentioned earlier, which is coming up in three weeks, September the 8th. Mark it on your calendar. I want everyone to invite someone to come with you to worship and to our picnic at Mule Putt that evening. In your bulletin, you should have a index card. Those of you who were here last week know what this is for. It's to write the name of someone that God has put on your heart to invite to come with you to worship in our picnic on September the 8th. So if you were here last week, raise your hand if you wrote a name on your card. Good for you. Good for you. Keep your hand up if you took your card home and prayed for the person whose name you wrote on your card. Good for you. Keep your hand up if you've already invited them to come with you. All right. Good job. Good for you. Well, if you weren't here last week, guess what? You get to do it this week. Or if you were here last week and you didn't quite follow through, got another chance. So, we're going to pray and listen 
for God to tell us who he wants us to invite. When you know who, you, who God's laying on your heart, you write that name on your card, and then I encourage you to take that home and put it in a place where you'll see it on your refrigerator or on your bathroom mirror or wherever it is that you know that you'll see it, and pray for the person that they will be open to your invitation. Pray for your courage and your opportunity to invite them. And let's see how God works. So uh, get your card ready. When, you're, when you know the name, you can write it on there. And let's spend a little time in prayer. Loving Father, what a blessing it is to be a part of this church family. Feel your love here among these people. Feel your presence in life-changing ways. And there are people right now at home, right here in Mulshu, who are hurting, who are lonely, who are lost, who need you and who need us. They need a church family. So show us, each one of us, who it is that you would have us to invite. And Lord, we, we pray for the courage and for the opportunity to extend that invitation in your name. That these people might come to know you and experience your love among us. Thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't gotten a clear name yet, you can take that home and keep working on it. If you have a name, good for you. Take it home and begin praying, preparing, and looking for that opportunity.